I really, really want all men to understand when we are in position, yes, sir. everything changes. Yeah. Everything. I just want you to hear, hear my heart. And if you're out of position, don't wait until you feel like you're qualified to get in position. Once you get this word in on today, step in position. Yeah, yeah. Okay? So I want us to turn our Bibles to Genesis uh, chapter 3. I'm going to read a foundational text. Genesis chapter 3, we're going to launch our reading at verse 6. And um, after I explain really what we're going to be feasting on, spiritually on today, will all the fire that's been in you blaze by the flamethrower? Come on. Okay? Um, Genesis chapter 3, verse 6. If you're ready, would you shout as loud as you can, I'm here. It says, so when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eye, a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband with her. So Adam wasn't around the block. Adam wasn't in the next room. He was standing right next to her. Okay. We need more godly men who won't allow our bride to be the enemy's experiment. So Let me good. see if she really going to die. Okay. <laughs> she also gave to her husband with her and he ate. Watch this. After he ate, then, somebody say then. Then. Then the eyes of both of them were open and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Then the Lord God called to Eve. Oh, y'all reading your Bible. Okay. Then the Lord God called to Adam's wife. Adam. Adam. Notice, thank you. Notice who God is holding at responsibility wow. first. Yeah, yeah. Even though Eve ate the fruit first. Then the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, Where are you? Our clause of concern, our verse of emphasis and where we're going to pack just for a few moments lives and takes residence in verse 9 of our foundational text where God is walking in the garden in the cool of the day and he asked this simple question Adam where are you it's not as though God is bad at hide and seek where are you in your relationship with me yeah yeah. Where you thought that you could find something more fulfilling outside of me. Adam, where are you? And unfortunately, church family, I believe that question is still being asked on today. Godly men, where are you? Godly fathers, where are you? Godly husbands, where are you? Godly sons, where are you? Godly brothers, where are you? Godly uncles, grandfathers, where are you? When we have men in the earth who aren't standing up and recognizing as for me and my house. Yeah. Yeah. See, I prayed for this. I prayed. I said, God, we need this word to be like spiritual arson. Yeah. Cause for there to be a fire in the heart of your men on purpose. Fire in our prayer life on purpose. Fire in our fasting on purpose. We need godly men to arise, stand at the doorpost of their house, and say, nothing gets in this house without first getting through me. No spirit can get in this house without first getting through me. No stronghold can get in this house without first getting through me. And if I be honest, I'm a little agitated. Yeah. The main reason I'm agitated is why is it most of our sermonic presentations are catered to the, to the trauma of women, catered 
to the trauma of men as though it is brothers who are asking for purity ceremonies. <laughs> brothers asking for purity ceremonies. And I'm not saying that every man, there are a lot of kingdom men, you are killing it for the gospel. You are doing a wonderful job and you need to hear from a brother say, I'm proud of you. Yeah. We are doing a phenomenal job, but I'm like, man, I just wonder, what's the percentage of men in 2024 that still desire to be husbands? <laughs> and if you don't desire to be a husband, that's cool. Just don't want covenant benefits though. Yeah. Talk. Talk heavy. <laughs> Can I get somebody to say arise? Arise. And take your position. Take your position. And this is our prayer that godly men will not be an endangered species. Yes, God. Will, would you open us up in prayer, brother? Dearly Father, we thank you for this opportunity, yes, God. Lord. We honor you for what you're about to do. We thank yes. you for the opportunity just to come in here and to be set ablaze. Yes, God, we pray right now, Holy Spirit, sweep this room with your consuming fire. Yes, Lord. Sweep in and consume every toxic thought every way of dysfunctional living, everything that tries to hinder your men and your women and all believers from stepping into who you've called them to be. Now God, fill the hearts and minds of your men and cause them to rise and take their place. Set the tone, Holy Spirit, for breakthrough, for deliverance, for the fire to break out. We strike the match, God, you set the blaze. We honor you and bless you for what you're about to do. We bind up every demonic attack to this moment in yes, the name God. of Jesus. Yes. We silence every witch, every warlock every 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 conducing and, and, sedu and seducing word that tries to entice your men to be focused elsewhere holy spirit captivate their minds and allow your spirit to fill them now yes, we honor you for what you're about to do in jesus mighty name amen amen somebody give god praise in the house yes we're going to speak around this thought from this subject Fireman. Yes, sir. Fireman. Yes, sir. Work. First, before we go any further, can we thank God for the fireman of this house? Can you bless God for this leader? Listen to me. Everybody ain't got good leadership. Thanks. A man of integrity, a man who wants to please God, a man who's in the book. We thank God for this fireman. So while I was studying, I'm excited. I'm excited. Because what we're going to do today is not only uh, clear your perspective for all the men that are listening and those who will watch, but also arm you in order to fight the fires that will come against your home, against your purpose, and against your destiny. So yeah. I was studying, brother, and, and, and I found out that there was a provision that firefighters actually have in the natural, right? Yeah. And it really captivated my attention when I saw how for every fire, there's a provision that's called two in, two out. And in this provision, it is saying that every fire has to have at least two firefighters to enter the fire together. This is to uh, alleviate and to minimize casualty and death. Yeah. They call this the immediately dangerous to life or health atmosphere. Hmm. Let me stop here and say everything happens in an atmosphere. And we have to be intentional about the atmosphere that we set because we can't step into breakthrough and still bring the atmosphere of bondage with us. Come on. Come on. So in this provision, right, so they're two in, and they, they have to go in and maintain visual and voice contact at all times. Because if the first person who's in there is actually fighting the fire goes out, there's somebody behind them to cover them, right? Now, there are two in, but there are also there are two that are designed to remain outside of the fire just in case they need to run in for reinforcements. That's Hence the term, two in. Two out. Two out. Yeah. And what Holy Spirit showed me is that a lot of us have found ourselves in one of these four positions, right? Some of the men that are here today and that will watch this are in this front position where you are carrying the weight of trying to lead through fire, mm. where there's smoke and you can't see, but the weight and the responsibility is on you to try to not allow everything that you see to go up in smoke. Mm. And you're being weighed down to say, okay, I'm doing everything I can. I'm sowing, I'm giving, I'm here, but it just seems like I'm not seeing no reprieve. And you have that weight of responsibility of trying to lead through a fire, but what do you do when you are leading lost? Mm. Talk, man. What do you do when you are leading and you can't see? Mm. But you have to keep fighting because the fire keeps intensifying. Or you're in the second position, right? Where you're, you decide that now I'm gonna let God lead. I've been doing it my way all my life. 
Yeah. Now I'm going to follow you, God, in whatever you want to do. But it seems like that as soon as I said, for God I'll live and for God I'll die, we keep going deeper into the fire. Ooh, and I'm saying, God, okay, I said that I was going to come out of that, but as soon as I made this declaration, we start going deeper into the fire, deeper into the smoke, yeah. and then now I have these concerns of trying to figure out, God, I, I, I know what you said, but this don't look like it. Yeah. They told me that in your presence was fullness of joy. At your right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. Come on. But now all I see is the smoke and flames, and I'm captivated by my pain and my trauma. That's good, bro. What do you do when you're getting drawn deeper into the fire when all you want to do is please God? Yeah. When you said yes, and as soon as you said yes, everything started to burn. Yeah. See, when you're in the world, you had money. <laughs> see, see, when, when you was out there in the streets, you, you have to worry about what, where your next meal was going to come from. But as yeah. soon as you say, God, yes, yep. everything oh. starts to go deeper into the fire. Yeah. Or you yeah. could be the one who's first outside. <laughs> and you say, okay, I'm here, and there's something that I feel that is calling me to go in, but I feel trapped by my historical data. <laughs> that there is something that is preventing me. <laughs> from stepping fully into what God is calling me to do. I feel the heat, there's something burning, but I just can't seem to move. I know God is calling me higher, yeah. and I know I need to lead this alone, yeah. but there's just something that keeps me here that I can't break free from. Or you may be in this, this position, the fourth position, where a lot of men dwell mm. in this state of hopelessness, mm. where you feel last in life, where everything that I try to do it seems like someone is there before me. Yeah. Every time I try to make one step, it seems like I'm being drugged to the back of the line. Mm. Every time I try to get right, it just seems like everything that I'm building goes to ashes and ruin. Yeah. And we can get into this place of hopelessness yeah. where a lot of men function, where you smile and you act like you're good and we got it all together, but inside we are deteriorating yeah. and our hope has escaped us. And we're in this place trying to figure out how do I get out of this place? And the perspective of every position is altered by the smoke and the flames that we see in our lives. So good. Because what we may not have seen is that in this first position, while you're trying to figure out where to go and you're trying to keep everything from going up in, in smoke and you don't know what's happening, that he is the God who orders your steps. We talked about in Proverbs, yeah, I know you plan your ways, but it's the Lord who orders your steps. Yeah. So that even in a mist when you can't see, your steps have an order to them. Yeah. Not that there's just a plan for your steps, they are ordered. Yeah. Think about a soldier in the army. When they go to fulfill orders, you go where I tell you to go. Yeah. And even the steps that you have, that you take, you may have free will in your direction, but God has the say in your destination. So your steps, no matter where you are going, even deeper into the fire and you can't see, you got to trust and know that these steps are ordered. I just got to keep stepping. Yeah. In the second position, what you may not have seen, <laughs> I, feel, I, feel, I feel fire in here. In the second position, what you may not have seen is that as you are leading, uh, letting God lead and you're going deeper into the fire, and it seems like everything that I'm doing is burning, and God, where are you? Because everything that I'm trying to build seems to keep just going to ashes and ruin. And I'm trying to let you lead. But what you may not have seen is he is the God in Job 23 who is trying you so that when you come out of this, you are producing pure gold. Wow. See, sometimes God got to take you deeper into the fire yeah. so that we can burn off some of this toxic thinking. Yeah. So that we can burn off some of these behaviors that yeah. seem to be habitual in your life. That yeah. we got to burn off some of this self-sabotage way of living. Yeah. How you keep expecting for everything to go left. Yeah. How you keep expecting things to just go crashing. And we got to burn that off so that when I produce gold, you aren't looking at it as gold plated. <laughs> what I'm trying to produce in you is something of substance. Yeah. And we keep settling for the things that are quick and easy. Yeah. It looked like gold. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. To, to, the, to the naked eye, it appears to be gold. Yeah. But when you put it under heat, we see what really comes out. Yeah. And so we're in this place where we say, okay, God, I, I, I'm trying to let you lead, and you're taking me into this fire. Yeah. And everything seems to be burning. He said, that's because I'm trying to produce something in you. Yeah. 
And I got to bring you into this refiner, finer, so this refi the refiner's fire, yeah. so that I can cook some of this negativity off of you. Yeah. And what you may not have seen in this so position good, is while you are outside and you're feeling in a space where you're like, I, I know I feel it, but I just can't get there. Yeah. Something inside of me is just saying, you know what, I just, I, I know I need to, but I can't. Yeah. I, I know I, that, that you're calling me God, but I just can't pick up that call right now because something is keeping me trapped. He said, you don't have to do it on your own. He said, in your weakness, my strength is made perfect. Yeah. But you have to be willing to allow yourself to yeah. lean into the strength. Yeah. Can I tell you, in this season, mm. you can't do it on your own. Yeah. I know you're strong. I know you carry a lot. But this ain't the season where you can say, I'm going to take it all on my own. Because he's saying, I need my strength to be made perfect in you. And if you just let me in, I will show you the way. Yeah. And in this hopeless state, mm. where men often dwell, and you feel far from God, you feel like God has forgotten you. You feel like he's changed your mind. He's changed his mind about your future. Yeah. You feel like that God has changed his mind according to the thing that he spoke over you. Not even knowing that in this place, when you are at the end of your rope, you are nearest, nearest to God. Yeah. Because he is near to the brokenhearted yeah. and those who have a contrite or crushed yeah. spirit. Yeah. That in that space where you feel crushed and you feel like, I just can't carry it no more. Yeah. I'm tired. What's the point? What's the use? Yeah. I'm not even going to try no more. He said, I am near there. Yeah. Because in that space, when you have reached that place of crushing and you have let go, now I can take over. Yeah. Yeah. So we see ourselves in different positions. Yeah. And what we may not have understand is that the smoke that we have been experiencing has, yeah. has swayed our perspective yeah. to see God in the fire. So yeah. the goal here today is to, yeah. is to clean that mask, yeah. clean the thing, the lens of what we see, yeah. so that I can identify not only where God is, but where am I. Yeah. See, and, and this, is, this is such a needed conversation. Because oftentimes, I think we hear a lot of sermons that are speaking about waiting to be found, mm. right? What about the finder? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> if, can we just talk today? Yes. If we keep on addressing her, keep on trying to get her reaction, if we keep on building her, yeah. but never address a underdeveloped him. Mm. We will have a generation of women praying for men who don't exist. And then what happens See? is that we'll get tired of praying for men who don't exist and settle for the men that are present. See? 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 Praying I feel this, man. There could be a wife right now praying for change to hit her husband's heart. And she convinced him finally to come to the church of God. And instead of them presenting the unadulterated version of a biblical Jesus, I'm after your pocketbook. I'm after a following and trying to build my platform. Then I am trying to save your soul. Because we aren't normalizing conversations like this. And so I, I, I get it, Will. I believe this, this because God is always going to go after the man and so is the enemy. Yeah. Please hear me. So goes the men, so goes the home. So goes the home, so goes the community. So goes the community, so goes the city. So goes the city, so goes the state. So goes the state, so goes the nation. So goes the nation, so goes the continent. So goes the continent, so goes the globe. Yeah. But it starts with fire men. I believe, I really believe two things happen. Because one of the most common DM questions I get, Jerry, you have a brother? <laughs> 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 You got a cousin? <laughs> where they at, though? <laughs> One of the most common questions yeah. I get. Wh where are the godly men? And so I understand what the enemy's doing. It's a direct attack on God's kingdom agenda for the home. Yeah. I know we didn't do it right. See, I present God's original agenda 
so that we can know that's the goal and we strive to get back to it. The enemy will try to distort the kingdom agenda or like that man outside make you think you can never get back to that place because of what you did while burning up. Yeah. Okay? It's an indirect attack. It's a direct attack on the home because God's original design is for there to be that kingdom man there, that kingdom woman there. Notice the Bible is very intentional. Adam and Eve. Yeah. I don't have time to bother that right now. <laughs> Adam and Eve. That's his original. Somebody say original. original. Forget the duplicates of culture. I'm yeah. talking about God's original. Yeah. Adam and Eve in the home so that Adam could be that fireman in the home, that fire starter in the home. That's the first thing. If I can get him out of position, I know it's easier to overtake a kingdom when there's no king present. Yeah. yeah. If I can get him to not fight, if he only thinks the best way to fight is with his fist but not with his faith, then I could attack the home as well because they don't know how to fight. All they know how to do is throw hands. Yeah. Not lay hands, but throw hands. Yeah. So if, if they don't know how to fight in faith and fight in prayer and, and fight in the spirit, if they don't know how to do that, yeah. then I could take advantage of the home. That's his first attack. And then this is going to be kind of tough, but I came to preach truth. Is that okay? Yes. We came to preach truth. The second is it's an indirect attack on the woman. Yeah. There's this weapon that hell is using on our sisters, you're doing the best that you can, especially if you are a single mother. I am blown away by the strength of my, like there is, it's obvious God gave you a supernatural grace to do that. Yeah. To raise your sons, raise your daughters, get them through school, get them through college, get them a job. It's grace. Yes. But I would be lying to you if I stood up here and didn't say that sometimes single mothers are tired. Yeah. Yeah. I'm tired. I'm exhausted. Yeah. I'm carrying and trying to push through a weight either, number one, due to I didn't have this wisdom when I made these decisions. Or the kingdom man won't be kingdom. Yeah. Number three, I just need God to give me the strength to push through. Yeah. To continue to have the faith. And I need to expose my offspring to God's original kingdom agenda. It's okay. This is one thing that I learned when I was a student pastor and I was dealing with a lot of parents. I would tell them, okay, you have to be okay with telling your children, my mistakes are not in your resume. Yeah. It's okay for me to say, mommy didn't do this right, baby, but this is God's original agenda. Yeah. Daddy didn't do this right, son, but this is God's original agenda. May it be said of us that we are the ancestors that left a legacy of kingdom fire versus debt, trauma, yeah. pain, warfare. May it be said of us that we slayed every giant so that our children don't have to fight the same Goliath. Come on. Is this making sense? Absolutely. And we got to get to the place where we're willing to let go of that guilt. Yes. Because guilt keeps us in condemnation. And Come condemnation on. keeps us from producing the kingdom's agenda. Yeah. <clears throat> so we're going to teach the men how to fight today. Y'all ready to fight? Yes. Now, now where, where are my guys who actually like to fight? You used to actually throw hands oftentimes and you, you yeah. used to fight. Oh, y'all yeah. yeah. going to act like y'all. Here we go. We got some honest brothers in here. <laughs> you know, I used to get down with it. Yeah. So here's the truth. I'm going to teach you now how to fight in the spirit realm, right? Because yeah. we like to try to fight things from a natural carnal perspective. But these fires, in order, if we're going to protect our home, we got to understand that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Yeah. But they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Yeah. So if you were looking at the acronym FIGHT, F-I-G-H-T, I'm going to give you practical things that you can apply to your life yeah. to help you fight well, right? Because this is going to reset our default operational defense mechanisms. Because what happens is when we get into fire, we, re we resort back to our default mechanisms. Yeah. What we know worked in this last season. Yeah. And as each fire intensifies, we keep going back to the same thing, which is why we can't see new results. So good. So the first thing for F, if we're looking at it as an acronym, if you're going to fight well, you have to be intentional about your focus. 
mm. about your focus. Yeah. What are you looking at? Philippians 3, 13 and 14 says this. No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, but I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past yeah. and looking forward to what lies ahead. I yeah. press on to reach the end of the race to receive the heavenly prize which God through Christ Jesus is calling us. Yeah. So my question is, what are you focused on? Because this is a season, listen to me, the enemy is nervous. Mm. Because when men start getting acclimated to the true essence of their purpose, we yeah. start doing damage to the kingdom of, hev uh, kingdom of hell. Yeah. And we got to get to the place where I am maintaining my focus because if I veer off, one of the, way, one of the main things that, that Satan uses to take men off is what they see. Yeah. Hmm. This is how we get caught up in, in relationships that weren't meant for us because I saw something I liked. Yeah. Talk, man. This is how I get into a situation where now I'm reproducing the same thing that my dad did because I saw it and it, and it resonated with me, so I went with what I see. Yeah. And that's why the Bible keeps telling us we got to walk by faith and not by sight. So good. Because if I'm walking by what I see, I am setting myself up to be an, a, uh, uh, not an adversary of God. Because check this. The carnal mind is enmity or at war with God. Yeah. Can I tell you that you don't have to be sinful to be carnal? Say that again, please. One but you don't, you don't have to be sinful to be carnal. Carnal yeah. means fleshy. Yes. Right? Now, we are humans. It is easy to operate in a, in a level of carnality. But I got to maintain a focus that produces the spirit of God in me. Yeah. Because if I just walk in a place where I may not be committing sin, but my carnal mind is keeping my focus off that I can't hear God calling me. Yeah. Yeah. So what are we focusing on? Because here's the truth. I know they tell yeah. you beware of the blind spots, but in this season there is breakthrough in the blind spot. Yeah. Mm. There are certain things you just got to put out your peripheral. Yeah. Because we think that because we're moving from here to here, we good. Yeah. When the truth of the matter is, I can still see that. Yeah. And there's certain things I just got to get out of my perspective altogether. Yes. There are certain conversations I just got to get out of my perspective altogether. There are certain relationships I just got to get out of. Some people I just got to block with no explanation. <laughs> yeah. So good. Because I got to get you out of my perspective. Yeah. Because what happens is we'll get fired up. You want to do God's will and then you go to have a conversation and you change your mind. Yeah. Why? Because as soon as I got somewhere where I could see it, I start thinking about it. Yeah. And I heard God say what he yeah. told me, but then, but then I got here and said, oh, but wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> Some here look good to me. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, I, I know God, I, I, I heard what you said, but, yeah. but, but, but she bad though. <laughs> yeah. I, I know God, I, yeah. I know you told me to cut him off, but, but, yeah. but he fine though. Yeah. And we got to get to a place where I'm putting these blinders on. That's how they have horses where they're able to move consistently forward. Yeah. We can't move forward because we see too much. Yeah. Yeah. Social yeah. media has expanded your peripheral yeah. to yeah. not even to be able to hear truth yeah. and be able to receive wisdom because yeah. I see too much. Yeah, so good. We're not going to talk about all the stuff that's going on in church today. Yeah, because I see too much. Yeah, so I don't know what to believe. Yeah. I got to maintain my focus. Yeah, and I got to put stuff in the blind spot. Yeah, what's the eye? Yeah. If I'm going to fight for real, I have to be intentional about my integrity. So good. Listen to me. Let, let me read the scripture to you. Yeah. Proverbs 11 and 3, the NIV says this, the integrity of the upright guides them, but the unfaithful are destroyed yeah. by their duplicity. Yeah. Yeah. What is duplicity? It's acting in bad faith, deception by pretending to entertain one set of intentions yeah. while acting under the influence of another. So good. This is not the season to be straddling the fence. Yeah. Listen to me. Yeah. Hell is playing for keeps. Yeah. This That's is really not right. the season to say, I'm going I'm to have one foot in and one foot out. Yeah. And I'll get there when I'm ready. Because yeah. hell is out to destroy. That's yeah. why the fire has intensified. Yeah. This is the season where I got to make my call and election sure. Because here's this. Yeah. I can't fight for my family with the enemy. Yeah. That's good, man. 
Yeah. I can't go to war for my family yeah. with the enemy. Yeah. I got to be in a space where my integrity is intact because if I am opening up, let me talk to you, every time I intoxicate God's investment, mm. I diminish its intended functionality. Mm. Come on. Every so time I intoxicate God's investment, yeah. he is invested in you. That's why you're still breathing. Yeah. Yeah. Every time I intoxicate it, yeah. I minimize its intended functionality. Yeah. I can so add to that. I can add to that as well. Whenever we constantly are spiritually malnourished, yeah. we will spiritually malfunction. <sighs> like you said, I'm not investing in that. Yeah. I'm not investing in that. And as you were speaking of that, I just want to say one thing and keep going, that I believe it's also a time for us to fight against a Jesus menu Christianity. Yeah. Meaning, okay, I'm cool with blessings. You can keep that <laughs> conviction. <laughs> I'm cool with, with, okay, taming my tongue. You can keep loving my enemies. Yeah. And so literally, this is how we operate with our faith. What would I like to consume? And God's like, get all the broccoli of integrity. Yeah. Get all the asparagus of honesty. You need all the kale of hope. You need all of this. Does this make sense? Come on. Because we are walking around with copied and pasted versions of scriptures that we agree with. But then we're omitting the parts of the Bible that teach us how to fight properly. And then we wonder why we keep taking L's when God, got, when God gave us the oil to win. Woo! I really hope, keep going, Will, I want to get every acronym. I really hope that you're taking notes with this because it's one thing to identify a problem. It's another thing to teach you how to solve it. Yeah. Keep going, bro. So, so it, I just love even the, 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 the taking that plate because a lot of us have come into God's house and we want to be served. Yeah. Facts. How's I'm, the worship? How's I'm, the, I'm, yes. I'm coming in to eat. And, come on. And, and the issue is, it's not what they're serving. The issue is my palate. Yeah. Be, because I'm so Bro. used, I'm so used to, to Kit Kats and, and Twix and candy bars. Sugar, and there you go. I'm so used to sugar <laughs> that when I, I'm, when I start hearing that I'm the salt of the earth yeah. and it yeah. starts to get a little bitter, instead of me saying, ouch, and receive what's good for me, yeah. I want to leave the buffet. Yeah. yeah. Be because it's a gas station right around the corner. <laughs> Come on, bro. No, I'm not. I'm not so, you so something there, bro. integrity, <laughs> integrity. The next thing that you do in order to fight that you have to use in this season is gratitude. Yes. Gratitude. 100%. Can I tell you, you cannot lead what you are not grateful for. 100%. You cannot lead effective what you are not grateful for. Yeah. Obligation minimizes your effectiveness. Woo. Say that one more time. That's when you are leading from a place obligation. of obligation, it minimizes your effectiveness. Hmm. I'm doing this because I have to. That's good, bro. It even minimizes the effectiveness on your seed, for God loves a cheerful giver. God loves a cheerful giver, and so yeah. does your wife. So does yeah. your child. Yeah. Hmm. Because if I'm doing this because I have to, yeah. it now minimizes how you receive it. Bro, look, look, it also minimizes your discernment. Yeah. Your discernment is higher when you have gratitude. Because if I, if I don't appreciate where I am, I can't discern a trap. Come on. Because I... Keep going, bro. It, cause, I want to get out. That looks good. Yeah, that, that looks, looks good. good. Yeah. That, that looks good, and I can't discern that it's a trap yeah. because I'm not grateful with where I'm at. In every so good, state... Come on, bro. In every so state, good. I have learned to be content. Yes. Because I know that if I'm grateful for what God has given me... Come on then we can maximize the possibility of what I have in front of me. Mm. Maybe that the tone in our homes would change right. if I start focusing on the fact that God gave me a wife Come on. who loves me, Come on. who knows my dirt, Come who on. deals with my inconsistency. Come on. Maybe I would see a difference if I start being grateful. Yeah. Yeah. And you got to choose gratitude. Yeah. The Bible says this, uh, uh, Philippians 4, 6, and 7, don't worry about anything. Yeah. Instead, pray about everything, tell God what you need, and thank him yeah. for all he has done. Yeah. Then you will experience God's peace. Can I tell you? So good. We don't get peace if we don't do the stuff before that. Yeah. We're <laughs> praying for God's peace 
Yeah. God, just bring peace into my home. Bring peace into my finances. Bring, pre- bring peace into my body. And he's saying, okay, I will if you stop worrying, mm. if you start praying, yeah. and you start being grateful. Yeah. Because gratitude is the key that opens the door to possibility. Mm-hmm. You haven't mm. seen what your marriage can produce if you're not grateful for it. Mm. Because gratitude, grateful energy produces mm. something different. Yeah. Grateful energy make you get up and go buy flowers. Yeah. <laughs> Grateful energy start leaving little sweet notes around the house. Yeah. Grateful energy will help you to fight off the traps that the inconsistency of what the enemy is producing in your peripheral yeah. are set for you. Yeah. Yeah. Because if you see your wife as a nagging wife, yeah. when she compliments you on the job, okay. here goes your perspective. Yeah. Oh, my wife don't ever tell me that, that I look good today. Yeah. My wife never tell me that, that I smell good. Yeah. Okay, now maybe, whew, help me Holy Ghost, maybe because you get dressed up for everybody externally. Yeah. 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 <laughs> the only time I, you put on cologne is when you're going out. Yeah. Yeah. What if you start putting on cologne to go to bed? <laughs> <laughs> You, you, you know what, if, 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 if we be honest, like sometimes the way I see Tanisha interact with our sons, yeah. I'm like, you know, I need that. The same way they're like, oh, Jay, I see you. Look at your little muscles, I see you. <laughs> <laughs> she knows, please hear me, women, your words have weight. Yeah. She says it to him. Now, I caught something from her that I didn't even recognize. Like when, when Jerry was first getting his hair cut, I didn't want his, you know, edge up to get all messed up, so I'd tell him be still. And so I would get real stern. I'd say, stay still, son. Jay, I need you to stay still. I need, and he would come, oh, but I don't like it, doing all that, right? And so I saw one day he was doing something around the house, and then Tanisha was like, ooh, I see you doing this. And he looked kind of like he was starting to blush a little bit. <laughs> and I said, I'm going to try it. <laughs> so he's getting his hair cut. I said, oh, look at you. Look at all handsome. I see you, boy. I see you. He's. <laughs> True story. I learned from just watching my wife help me raise our sons. Yeah. We never outgrow. I don't care if he's 14, I don't care if he's 44. We never outgrow. Man, that looks good on you. Yeah. The difference is, I might say, appreciate that, bro. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we still need it. I'm trying to get us to understand. The seductress knows it. Oh, I'm about to say something strong. Come on. Before the marriage, you used it. Oh, oh. After the marriage, you stopped using it. Why? Because you saw his boy-like ways and his flaws. But just because we have flaws does not mean we're not kings. Just like you're 36 and you start crying when something hits you. We can't say, why are you acting like a little girl? Yeah. That's the way that you express. And I'm going to go ahead and get in trouble, so we're going to say this. Come on. My sisters also need to stop using tears as a manipulation of being corrected. You had all the energy in the world and grabbing all that air, but when you're wrong, well, I was just trying to tell you what I was just... <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 seriously. Brothers, don't leave me out here, please. Come don't on. Me. Don't leave me out here. The only time I'm getting men to stand up in church. I mean, just rolling the neck, but but I just wonder sometimes in the middle of talking when you recognize that you're wrong. (laughs) Why? Well, well, I'm just going to, okay. (laughs) The same way you would not want us, I'm done talking. Come on. There has to be focus, integrity, gratitude. This is how you fight. 
Let me help you if you need it to like memorize it. Everybody say this. The way I think, the way I think. helps the way I think. Helps the way. That's good. <laughs> the way I think is impacted by the way I think. Does this make sense? Let's keep going, bro. Because, ah. The truth of the matter is, just to piggyback on that, since you get into trouble, I ain't going to leave your hair by yourself. <laughs> it's for the women who are speaking to the men. The question is, what do you bring the man when the enemy comes to whisper to you? Yeah. Because, because the serpent came. Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. No. I think you need to ask the question, can you even identify when the enemy's speaking to you? Uh. Right? But let me take, let me give it, let me give you how you can identify. Is when the enemy starts telling you something that you see that's out of alignment with what God said. Mm. 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 So when mm. the enemy comes to say, well, you know, he, 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 he's lazy, but God called him a man of righteousness yeah. and a man of effectiveness and a king, when you take that fruit, and give it to him, hmm. why are you being so lazy? Hmm. What happens? He takes it, he eats it, and resentment starts to build. Hmm. And now I'm disconnected, and then when God comes calling, I say, the woman that you gave me. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I felt that. <laughs> what? So. So. so hold on, no, 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 no. <laughs> So I, I can say this, but I, I want you to make this digestible to the sister who, who the back of her neck is hot right now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> when, I see, when I see the flaw, yeah. how do I present it to him without him saying, it's this woman you gave me? Yeah. Let, let's... When I see the flaw, instead of addressing the flaw, always, I speak to what, what I want to see. Hmm. Good. You, you're, okay. you're giving him a haircut. You start affirming yeah. what you see in him. Yeah. Oh, you sharp. Yeah. Oh, look at you handling business. What does that make a man want to do? Handle more business? Yeah. <laughs> there you go. I see a flaw, yeah. Yeah. but I'm going to speak to the king in you so I don't get the clown. Yeah. Yeah. That's good, bro. I got to speak to what I want to see. Yeah. It's so Cause, good. Because we war internally. Yeah. Women yeah. war externally. Yeah. Yeah. When women are going through, you see it. They're crying. It's, yeah. you, it's external. Yeah. A, man, a man could have a blaze on the inside of him. He, yeah. he is, has no hope. He's dead behind the eyes, yeah. but he's still in here praising and he still works. Yeah. And you can speak to something yeah. that will cause the fire to spread in him. Yeah, so good. And even his perspective and the little hope that he has left goes up in ashes and ruin. Mm. So instead of speaking to the flaw, let me speak to the king. Because if I speak to you correctly, what I speak to is going to be determined as, as to what I receive. Yeah. Because see, I, I wish I could have been there <laughs> to see how Eve presented the fruit. She was, she was naked. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so the king, <laughs> if you want to speak to your king, come naked. Get naked. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to have now, us Mary, go. Mary, Mary folk, yes. Mary folk, yeah. Mary folk. It's going to go viral all out of context. <laughs> like, did you watch the whole sermon? <laughs> <laughs> so, gratitude. What am I grateful for? Find it. Yeah. Find the gratitude. I just need, I just need men to say this. I just feel it. Yeah. Can I get every man to say, we got needs too. We, we got, got needs too. too. Okay. Yeah. Now, you see that? You see it? Brothers, y'all on. Yeah, they do. Now, if I said, sisters, we got you. you go ahead. They would have stood up. Yes. Everything. <laughs> but we got to get to the place, right? Yeah. Here's a, ooh, help me, Holy Ghost. Yeah. One of the places that you got to practice gratitude the most is when you're looking in the mirror. Mm. Yeah. And you got to start speaking to yourself to affirm the things that you don't even see yet. Yeah. Yeah. You got to start speaking to yourself because what happens is when a man goes through, he gets quiet. And when he gets quiet, the enemy starts talking. 
So you so got to get in the habit of looking at yourself and say, I know I'm not there yet, but I'm not where I used to be. Yeah. You're doing good, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're going to keep pushing. Yeah. yeah, I know you angry, but, but guess what? You ain't go off that time. Come on, pat yourself on the back. Because yeah. the more you affirm yourself, that's yeah. when you start building up. So that's gratitude. What's H? Yeah. Hope. Yeah. If you're going to fight, yeah. we got to find a way to restore hope. Yeah. Because so many people and so many men have abandoned their posts because they don't see hope. What's the point? Yeah. What's, what's, what's the point of me doing all of this stuff? Because every time I do it, it seems like that it's never good enough. Yeah. What's the point? And we've lost hope. And we got to get to the place that even Proverbs 13 and 12 says this, hope deferred makes the heart sick. Yeah. Yeah. And we're in that place yeah. where we just keep deferring it. It's going to come one day. Yeah. One day, it'll, you know, one day it'll turn around. Yeah. And the longer you sit there, the harder it is to come out of that space. Yeah. Because there are certain fires that are designed to burn the hope out of a man. Yeah. But you got to get to the place of understanding. Can I tell you something? That most of hope is lost when we as men try to step into God's role of responsibility. Huh. That's good, bro. Most hope is lost when I'm operating out of the confines of what I am responsible for. Yeah. Because as a man, we are used to taking on more than what we can handle. Yeah. I got it. Yeah. yeah I can do it. I'm good. Yeah. No, you're not. Yeah. We got to get to the place where now I understand. Jeremiah 29, 11 says this. For I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. Says who? The Lord. There are plans for good and not for disaster to yeah. give you yeah. a future and a hope. Listen to yeah. me, brothers. The future is not your responsibility. Yeah. Yeah. Now yeah. is. Mm. That's good, bro. What That's you really do good. now yeah. will set up the future that you're expecting, but the future is not so your good. responsibility. Yeah. He says, the plans that I have for you are good, not for disaster, yeah. to give you yeah. a future and a hope. Yeah. We're so concerned with the next moment mm -hmm. that we're missing the blessing of this moment. Yeah. yeah. And I'm so concerned, I can't even be here present. Yeah. When I get home, my mind is racked and I'm, and I'm, yeah. I'm going through all of these thoughts and I yeah. can't even play with my kids because I'm yeah. so focused on what's coming tomorrow. Yeah. That's not your responsibility. Yeah. Yeah. This is where I got to get to the place and say, you know what, God? I'm going to do the best I can today. Yeah. Yes. And what okay. I do today yeah. will lead me to where you have me tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Because all I have is now. Yeah. I hope for tomorrow. Yeah. But now faith is yeah. the substance of things hope for. Hope for. So good. So I got to get out of God's seat yeah. and be stuck in a place where I say, okay, God, I'm just going to do the best I can today. Right. Yeah. And at the end of this day, if I can say I did my best, yeah. I gave it all I had, then yeah. guess what? I'm going to be grateful for the energy that I gave in today. Yeah. And that's how I'm going to build it up. And now yeah. I'm going to be able to fight from a different playing field because yeah. I understand yeah. that this is my realm of responsibility. Yeah. So yeah. I got to be in a place where I have hope. And the yeah. last is T. Hmm. How do you fight? We got to get to a place where we are willing to trust God. Hmm. Hmm. I, I'm not talking about believe God. Hmm. I'm talking trust. about trust God. Yeah. See, there are two mm. components to faith. There's your belief and there's your trust. The mm. belief is in God's ability. Do you believe that he's a healer? Do you believe that he was raised from the dead? Do you believe that he is the son of God? Yeah, I believe that. But when you trust, it's when you take that belief and apply it to your life. Yeah. I believe that he is a healer and I trust that he will heal me. Yeah. And I got to get to the place where I'm building my trust. Yeah. Because when I'm connected to God, when I'm in this fire, see, yeah. and, and for firefighters, they have this thing called the fire flow path. Yeah. And mm -hmm. when you're in a fire and you can't yeah. see, you got to understand and find where is this fire flowing to. Mm -hmm. And a lot of our trust is minimized because we won't get into the flow. Mm -hmm. And I got to figure out where is God leading in this smoke because the flow path will lead you to the opening that God has in store for you. But what happens is we get in and we can't see and we come out. Yeah. Because I don't trust that there's something that's yeah. in here that I need. Yeah. We got to start asking the questions, God, what do I need here? Yeah. What do I need here that's going to sustain what you are bringing me? Yeah. 
Because the worst thing God can do is give you something you're not ready for. Yeah. Yeah. The worst thing he can do is answer your right now prayer and you're not ready right now. Yeah. yeah. So good, bro. No, I, I was, this, can we just be transparent? Yeah. This is, like, I'm up here kind of like writing notes myself because it's like, <laughs> when, this was a few weeks ago, I just, I hit you, I was a little down. Yeah. And you were, the same thing you just said, you were reminding me, Jerry, tomorrow belongs to God, bro. Yeah. You said, remember, hope deferred makes the heart sick. Yeah. Remember, we <laughs> were on the did, phone. Yeah. We on the phone. Having, this is why it's good to have brothers that you can call. Yeah. Just, just talking to him. And he's like, man, you, what, what God is going to do. See, because I remember I showed us a few weeks ago when we were talking about the building. He said, man, what would, you, what would you do if the building really was 50 million? That would probably mess up your faith, right? So sometimes God doesn't even show you yeah. so that you can keep on building and keep on burning and keep on being faithful because if you saw what it was going to do and naturally you're like, how are we going to afford that? It, start, it could bleed over into the effectiveness of your today assignment yeah. because you're focused on tomorrow. And so each time you study, there's an anxiety there. There's a how, God. Trust him. Yeah. Trust them. And for all men who may be watching, because men, honestly, sometimes you size each other up. Yeah. Unless you really love Jesus and you're, you're confident in yourself. Amen. Sometimes when you see another dude, you might think, just randomly, I could take him. <laughs> Am I telling the truth? Just, just That's random. real. It's real. <laughs> I can <It's> take real. <laughs> <laughs> But, oh, let me. <laughs> but stay, stay right there. But the goal is to be able to switch, up, switch that same energy over into the spirit. Because when I walk is. by depression, I can say, I can take it. Yeah. Yeah. When oh, I yeah. walk by lack and frustration, I yeah. can say, I can take it. Because yeah. I know what God said about me, yeah. so I'm not just going to lay down and take this. I'm not going to yeah. lay down and take yeah. this layoff. On, and bro. I know that I don't see Come it, on, but bro. I know I can take it. Because greater yeah. is he that's in me than he. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, bro. Come on, bro. But, yeah. It, it's, so I, I want you to understand that there are fires that we go through to be able to give you fire. Yeah. Like when I first met you, bro, and I was like, man, that, he is an intercessor, a preacher like I've never heard before. And I'm, I'm at a place where if somebody's stronger in the area, I'll lean on them. <laughs> Same. I'm not Same. the dude. Let me flip. No. They got this. Hey, bro, I need this. I think that's well-rounded leadership. Yeah. Right? And so once I really got to build a relationship, when you told me, you said, hey, bro, when, when I was paralyzed and I was telling my arm to move and it wouldn't move, and I began to cry and begin to pray, now I'm like, that fire made you on fire. Yeah. So yeah. Now, there's no shame in lifting your hands. Come on. There's no shame in sharing your testimony. Come on. And so I, I really want... I, I, want us to, I want the world to really see this and the church to see this, but I want to give you these four points quickly, and then I want, I want you to, sh to see the power of men in position, okay? So just number, number one, how do we change this? Yeah. How do we change where it seems to be a lack of, of kingdom men? We must have training and examples. Training and examples. Yeah. This is something that needs to be trained up. Hear me. Where are all the godly men? If you can't find them, build them. Yeah. How? Your son, your nephew, your cousin. If you can't find them, build them. That's what we're trying to yeah. do. Herb, every Wednesday night, we're trying to build them. We don't come here out of our mother's womb loving God. And some of us don't know what manhood is. Just because we got the part doesn't mean we know how to play the part. Yeah. We need training and examples. Paul puts it this way in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 11. Command and teach these things. Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. Train and set an example. It's like time when I was working out with my brothers. And we got one more set, man. I'll, I'm done, bro. <laughs> then the two other brothers hit that set. What did he do? All right, man. <laughs> he saw an example. And that example inspired him to try. 
We need to see more godly men trying. Yeah. Godly fathers trying, not perfect. That's Jesus' job. Yeah. Perfect is focusing on him who is perfect and letting him mold me. Yeah. So that I could be in the perfect will of God. Somebody say training. Training. And examples. And examples. Next, we need to return. Mm. Come back. Just because you messed up don't mean run away and stop calling. No. You haven't talked to your children three, four years? Call today. Yeah. It might be awkward. They may not answer. Try. Try so that you don't have to look at yourself each and every day in the mirror and have all of these regrets because you're not trying. Yeah. Trying. It's the effort of allowing God to do the miraculous. Give me your two fish and five loaves. I can't bless it if you don't give it. Try. Step out the boat. I can't have you be a water walker if you don't try. Try. You won't see me in the fourth man in the fire with you if you don't, see the, if you don't use your faith. Try. Yeah. And just because it's hard does not mean God isn't using it. <sighs> Lastly, of course, what we need is prayer. God, change this. Change this. Every man that we, we spoke to um, on Wednesday night, or the brothers that heard about it on the small group app, could you just come here, the brothers that we, we have the uniform to, to dress, just come on stage as you can. Um, all men in the house, if you don't, overflow too. Let's move these real. Y'all come on stage. All men, just stand up, wherever you are, all men. All men, all over the sanctuary. All over the sanctuary. Woo! If you're in the overflow, stand. If you're in the overflow and you're dressed up, come in here. All men. All of us. Space out. Coming from the overflow, from all over men, I just want you to stand. Okay? Jesus turned the world upside down with 12. We got more than 12 men on the stage. Okay? More than 12 men in the audience. And there's every man that came in. There's a certificate of recognition. It says this certificate is proudly presented to a fireman. Right? If you're watching this online, there's a QR code where you can see it. I want everybody, everybody to get this. QR code on the lower thirds. You can take a picture of it. Download it for your son, your uncle, your grandfather. This would be a great gift. Hey, I got this confession for you, along with a gift card for wherever else he likes. <laughs> but I want us to really recognize this is what heaven is after. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Ladies, I need you to understand. I need you to understand. Once we're in position, it makes your position easier. Yes. Easier. I want you to hear the power in this confession if we have men that lead this out. Go ahead, Herbert. We're going to do the same confession that we did upstairs. As we get ready for that confession, I want to transfer this word that God transferred to me. Years ago, God said, you're one who fights. Yeah. I want to transfer that to you because until today when they were talking, I thought that word only applied to me. But it applies to every man of God that makes a decision to fight. Yeah. I want that to ring in your hearts in that low moment, I am one who fights. Mm. Why is that important? Because we have a saying that closed mouths don't get fed and closed mouths don't win wars. Yeah. What I heard the enemy saying over there is, is those these fight words. Yeah. And so That's what good. we're about to confess, the, the, the fire is going to go up, the fight is on after we get off this stage. Yeah. So I'm going to ask you to repeat after me. As a man of God, as a man of God, I am the official dignity of God in the earth. I am the official dignity of God in the earth. I am God's identity. I am God's identity. Every man. I exemplify the character. I exemplify the character and integrity. And integrity of God. Of God. Christ is my head. Christ is my head. And I imitate him. And I imitate him. In all that I say. In all that I say. In all that I do. In all that I do. I am a family man. I am a family man. Solidified in truth. Solidified in truth. Perfected in righteousness. Perfected in righteousness. Undefiled by the world. Undefiled by the world. I will not allow myself. I will not allow myself. To be defiled. To be defiled. By evil thoughts. By evil thoughts. Sex outside of marriage. Sex outside of marriage. Drugs. Drugs. Alcohol. Alcohol. Cigarettes. Cigarettes. Pornography. Pornography. 
Masturbation. Masturbation. Deceit. 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 Gambling. 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 And such like. And such like. I am God's representative in the earth. I am God's representative in the earth. Therefore, yeah. success is inevitable. Yeah. Success. And failure yeah. is not even an option. And failure is not an option. I am a servant to my family. I'm a servant to my family. I am organized and disciplined. I am organized and disciplined. Therefore, therefore, everything I set my mind to accomplish, everything I set my mind to accomplish, must prosper. Must prosper. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. All God created me to be. All God created me. I have made up in my mind to be. I've made up my mind to be. Amen. 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 Can we give God praise for that? I said give God praise for that. So if you just would, in this moment, just a prayer of hope, mm -hmm. a prayer of faithfulness <clears throat> as we return yeah. Yeah. in our rightful positions as kings. So when God wants to do something in the earth, hear me, when God is looking, where can I move in the earth and where can I find the kingdom men? We'll be able to stay right here. Yeah. Yeah. God, we thank you. We honor you right now in the name of Jesus. If you are standing next to a man, just put your hand on the man. Father God, we thank you right now for these, your sons. We thank you, God, for these, your kings. We thank you, God, that the gates of hell will not prevail against what you have started and began in their lives. We thank you, God, that even in the midst of their brokenness and their pain and the things that they are struggling with, God, Holy Spirit, fill every crack and every crevice and breathe hope back into their minds and hearts. Breathe hope back into their hearts and their spirits. Breathe hope back into their finances. Bring hope back into their bodies. Breathe hope, God, in the name of Jesus. I pray against every demonic attack on your sons in the yes, name Lord. of Jesus. Satan, the Lord, rebuke you and the blood of Jesus be against you. Every place of satanic sabotage, let it be destroyed now in the name of Jesus. Every Jezebel in disguise, throw them from the rooftops. God, we thank you that every attack on their character and on their mindset right now is being removed in the name of Jesus. God, give them clarity in this season. I pray right now for clarity in this season. God, that you would give them clarity of thought, that you would give them clarity in their emotions. God, I thank you that even as they open up and allow you in in a space of vulnerability, that you are repairing the pieces that were stolen by trauma, that you are repairing the pieces yeah. that were stolen by word curses. I come against every word curse that was spoken over your sons. Everything that was said over them, even from a child, I go back in Holy Spirit, send the blood back, and God repair the breach in their perspective of themselves in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, send the blood back to repair the breach in their perspective of themselves, that they will see themselves now as a king, that they will see themselves now as a son, and that every perspective, the smoke that tries to cloud their vision, God, give them vision for their homes, give them vision for their finances, give them vision for their families, give them vision right now in the name of Jesus. We bind up the attack of the enemy, and we speak freedom over them now in the name of Jesus. Let the blood of Jesus cover their minds. Let them think higher. Yeah, yeah, we come against the spirit of low-level thinking. Yes, Lord. The spirit of low-level thinking. God, allow them to step into who you've called them to be so that they can operate in their creative genius. That the ideas that you have that's been in store and in limbo in the atmosphere, that you will begin to release it and give them dreams and visions. Reveal yourself to them in the spirit while they are resting, while they are sleeping. I come against every tormenting spirit that tries to keep them from resting. In the name of Jesus, every tormenting spirit, we bind you up in the name of Jesus. By the blood of the lamb, we say, we speak freedom over them now. In their homes, God, bring reconciliation to marriages. We thank you, God, in the name of Jesus. Reconciliation to relationships with their children. That every breach... God, we thank you that you are restoring and repairing. God, we thank you that even now, generational trauma is being healed now in the name of Jesus. We thank you that the curses that were passed down from generation, the weight that they carry that has nothing to do with them, 
the things that they're paying for that their great 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 grandfather started God we thank you for generational freedom now in the name of Jesus I speak against every generational curse let it be severed now in the name of Jesus and generational freedom be released in this atmosphere God I pray right now I pray right now for every man who feels isolated in a silo Oh, that they are stuck in a place where they are rehearsing the trauma of their past or a low-level perspective of who you've called them to be. God, I pray right now, Holy Spirit, that by your fire that you would break the silo and allow your fire to infiltrate. Father God, I pray right now for a new dispensation of your Holy Ghost fire. Holy Spirit, right now, I pray right now that the gift of the Holy Spirit will just sweep this room for those who, who have a desire and have a desire in their heart to receive the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, and speaking in other tongues as you give utterance. I pray right now for the fire of the Holy Spirit to quicken their hearts right now, that you will begin to allow them to step into who you've called them to be, that the fire of God begins to burn uncontrollably. God, let your Holy Spirit just fill their tongues, that they will begin to speak in other tongues as you give them utterance. I thank you right now that you are giving them language for their future, that you're giving them language for their homes, you're giving them language for their finances, that you're giving them perspective of the future, and that every area of bondage is broken in the name of Jesus. I thank you, God, Holy Spirit. Come in now. Come into their hearts now. Fill them like never before in the name of Jesus. Oh, if, even if you have a holy language, just begin to speak. Oh, it's going to be like wildfire catching in here. Even while we are praying and you feel your tongue itching, just release your tongue to the master that you will begin to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gives them utterance. Oh, God, in the name Holy Spirit, fill the room. Oh, just release it. We release trauma. We release pain. We release heartbreak. We release anything that tries to keep us trapped. Father God, in the name of Jesus, let there be revival in this city. Thank you, God, that these are the leaders of revival. These are the leaders of revival. These are the leaders of revival. Oh, that they will allow revival to break out in their communities, in their homes, that the fire would burn, burn Holy Spirit. Burn Holy Spirit. Burn up everything that's not like you. Burn up everything that tries to keep them stuck where they are. Burn every chain that keeps them stuck and stagnant. By the power of the Holy Spirit, hear me. Hear me. I, 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 there are two things we war against even now. The idea that there is unfinished business. Listen to me. For those of you who may be thinking, I just need to go back one more time. There's unfinished business here. I just, I, I, I know I need to let it go. I know I need to let it go. Listen to me. The devil is waiting for you there. This is something you have to let go now. You have to make a swift change. You can't go back this time. So everything that's been trying to pull you back, deliverance break out in this place. In the name of Jesus, sever the tie. Sever the tie in the name of Jesus. Block it. Holy Spirit, block it. Block every attempt to return. Seal it off in the name of Jesus. And I come against that spirit that tries to whisper thoughts of suicide in your ear that causes you to think that it's better off, that yeah. the world is better off without you, yeah. that your family is better off without you, yeah. that, that things are better. I silence the voice of, of satanic sabotage of yeah. suicide yeah. now in the name of Jesus. Yes, your life has purpose. Yeah. Your life has value. Yeah. God has something in store for you. Yeah. That's for here and now. And I pray against every delay. I pray against every delay that God will supercharge your process and allow you to step fully into your purpose. Holy Spirit, seal every access point that the enemy has used for years. I see open gates 
that the enemy has slipped in time and time again where you felt yourself progress and then all of a sudden it seems like you were back where you started Holy Spirit close the gate in the name of Jesus seal every door every window by the power of the Holy Spirit Holy Spirit and I thank you God thank you Father I thank you God that the fire that was sparked here today oh let it burn out of control yes Lord that they won't even know what happened while they're driving that the spirit will just arrest them and the spirit will be speaking through them you are not your mistake you are not what you've done you are a king and it is time for you to reign listen to me it is time for you to reign in the name of the Lord Jesus last thing I have to do as an assignment every brother that's standing on the stage I need you to either put your hands on this man of God or surround him no 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 matter of fact step back in the middle let them surround you step back I need it surrounded surround for this is a physical demonstration of what is happening in the spirit for even though the enemy tries to sift you in your thoughts tries to weigh you down with weight that doesn't belong to you that the host of angels that are assigned to you are standing on their post we pray against every demonic attack on this leader everything that tries to arrest his heart and his mind we bind it up in the name of Jesus we thank you God that stress is not his portion we thank you God that frustration has to go we thank you God that you are opening the portal for clarity to be poured out and we thank you God that you are speeding up what you've spoken over his life I thank you God for the expedition of your promise I thank you God that in this season you are bringing it from the north south east and west and I come against the thoughts that try to arrest his heart that tries to make him feel as if he is failing or will fail I bind the tormenting thought in the name of Jesus and command it to shut up by the power of the Holy Spirit give him strength and grace oh let, let even the power of the men that surround him and cover him filter into his heart and his mind supernatural strength for the journey supernatural strategy for the season supernatural productivity supernatural promise open the doors of the supernatural yes god and i thank you god that even now you're resurrecting words that you spoke over him years ago eyes have not seen ears have not heard neither has it entered into the hearts of men the supernatural things that will take place out of this house Woo! that there will be a wave of the supernatural miracle signs and wonders miracle signs and wonders Woo! that the power of the Holy Spirit infiltrates and strengthen you that he will perfect the things that he set over you he will establish his plans he will strengthen and settle you supernatural strength and for every man that stands here we stand in the gap on your behalf yes God this is your commission man to pray for your man of God yes, God. to cover him while you cover him now Amen. that you add him in your daily prayer as Amen. he is as he's battling not only the things that's after him but the things that's after you Amen. this is your commission to cover him because hell is intensifying his attack on him yes because if he can get him he thinks he can get you but the devil is a lie. I bind up every witch, every warlock, every demonic force, every satanic sabotage in the name of Jesus. And may the fire of the Holy Spirit infiltrate this house. Woo. 
and that it would fill and filter out into your house. Oh, I see even the spiritual giftings developing in your children at such an early age. Oh God, the supernatural. Your house will be a house of the supernatural. Thank you, God, for covering him. Now may peace guard his heart and mind through Christ Jesus. Peace. I speak peace to the storm. Peace. 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 Just stretch your hand forward and say peace. peace. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we honor you, God. We thank you in the mighty name of Jesus the Christ. Can we just bless God in this place? I'm talking about a ridiculous praise. Bless him. I need to hear a sound of freedom. A sound of freedom. A sound of freedom. Yes, God. Yes, God. Freedom. Some God. praise in the house. Can we give God just some praise in the house? Just thank you. Yes. Um, I just thank you for allowing us to wash your feet for a living. If you haven't accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, I highly implore that you do. I just want us to, to say this prayer. God, without you, I'm lost. I'm lost. I need you. I need you. Come, into Come into my heart. Save me. Save me. Change, me. Change me. I declare you as my Savior. Now God, King, King yourself so that I follow you as my King. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, once you just text the word fresh start, to this number, if you're looking for a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching church, we would love to serve you. You text the word membership to the exact same number, 844-484-0836. You can start coming to Discipleship Small Group on Wednesday nights at 6 and 7.30, and it's going to bless your life. Are you edified on today? Yeah. Yeah. yeah.